What's going on? I'm Jay with Aquastar Distributors. Uh, got my special helper. Dr. Nicholas. Dr. Nikki, the vacuum flush doctor. Uh, today we're gonna talk to you about operating a vacuum tester gauge. How to use it, things to know, and some best practices. Stay tuned. All right, so you're having some trouble with your vacuum flush system. You've gone through a couple of the maybe basic service issues. You did the duct bill valves and the pump is still cycling frequently. A vacuum tester gauge is a very useful tool for isolating leaks. So this here is the analog gauge. Um, definitely need to purchase one of these in order to help find out where that leak is, unless you just wanna go ahead and start changing parts. Um, if you're doing this a lot or time is on the side, the digital gauge is another great option. Um, we sell these on our website and we also sell the analog ones. So definitely give us a visit there and give us a shout. So Dr. Nikki's gonna put this out of frame. The instructions for the vacuum tester gauge are done extremely well. I'm gonna pop these up on the screen uh, I have them linked on the same product page as the vacuum tester gauge. Has a really nice leak down chart. Uh, so how do you use this gauge? The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure it's at zero. If it's not at zero, you may have to gently pry this little rubber cap and tap on the gauge to get it to go through, to go to zero. Um, just because of shipping, it's up in an airplane, it's on a rail car going through mountains and the atmospheric pressure, like any analog, um, fluid filled gauge can kind of get out of calibration. So we want to make sure it's at zero. Um, so we have our vacuum flush system. We don't want to break our seat hinges, so we're going to be very gentle with that. Dr. Nikki, would you mind holding the gauge while I step on the pedal? Yes, sir. So I like to do things as easy as possible. Normally, uh, it's easiest to go right to the base of the toilet. All right, you're gonna step on the pedal. You're gonna wanna shut your water off when you do this. Look, it's rising. So the vacuum flush system is running. The way the system is calibrated, it should shut off at about 10 inches of vacuum. Okay, it's shut off. Hold that nice and still, Dr. Nikki. Great. So, the system is shut off. I usually wait about 15 to 30 seconds, and then I'll note down at what point the vacuum gauge shut off at. Now, the instructions, like I said, are very well done, and it breaks it down into about 30 minutes. So, we don't want the system to drop more than 0.3 inches of mercury or HG or on our gauge, 0.3 in 30 minutes, okay? That's basically the leak down rate. We can extrapolate that out. So minimum amount of time between cycles is three hours. We really like to see the systems go eight. The reason for that is if you or your kiddos are sleeping, we don't want anybody to be woken up at night with the vacuum pump running. So Dr. Nikki, where did that gauge shut off? At 10. Just below 10. I would say about 9.9. .9. So we'd write that down, wait 15 minutes, and through the magic of editing, do 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 Dr. Nikki and I are back. Dr. Nikki, has the gauge moved at all? Yes, it has gone to 10. It's gone to 10. It's pretty much exactly where we started it. Yes. Okay, so it hasn't, it went a little up. That can kind of happen a little bit because atmospheric pressure, temperature, things of that nature. And that's why I really suggest waiting a good, you know, one minute before you note the time down. Additionally, Dr. Nikki's been tugging on the hose of the vacuum gauge, which probably affected his reading a little bit. But basically the gauge hasn't moved, so we know we don't have a leak. By sticking the vacuum tester gauge 
inside the base of the toilet. We've removed the toilet from the vacuum system. So if your system was running, let's say every 30 seconds, you take the vacuum tester gauge, you plug it in the base of the toilet, that thing holds rock solid, doesn't move for 30 minutes. Then we know we have a leak in the base of the toilet. I'd rebuild the whole base of the toilet, new bowl seal, ball, shaft, spring cartridge, and this particular toilet happens to be a low profile. I'd also change the sponge seal, and that should get you up and running. But if your system continues to run, and every, let's say, two to five minutes, or your vacuum gauge is dropping, you've looked at the chart on the vacuum tester gauge instructions, and it's still running, I'd suggest taking a step further back. So Dr. Nikki, we're gonna pull that out of there. I'll step on the pedal, go ahead. <laughs> now, maybe a little difficult for you to guys to see. This is an S-series vacuum pump and an accumulator tank. This system's in a couple of different variations. Sometimes you might have that L-shaped VG2 vacuum generator, or you may have a low profile tank. So we wanna start isolating components out of the equation, right? Um, it'd be nice if we could stick our tester gauge in here, but due to the way this system is designed, that's not gonna happen. I like to do things as simple as possible. So Dr. Nikki, don't you think the next simplest place is gonna be down here right at the pump? Yes. So if we stick our vacuum tester gauge right here, we grab a heat gun, warm this hose up, pull it off the pump. And then we stick the thing down it. Stick the tester gauge. Why don't you hand me one of the tester gauges? Let's try this one. We'll try the digital gauge. I love the digital gauge. That's what I use every day. I recommend it for all the professionals. So we take our vacuum tester gauge, stick it inside the pump, let it run, wait approximately 30 to 90 seconds before we jot down what point the gauge shuts off at. Then we wait the allotted time on the instructions, take a reading, if there's no leak, now we've isolated the leak to the vacuum tank. Uh, it could be the vacuum switch, or sometimes if you have any little monsters running around your bilge and decide to step on your hoses, maybe they broke one of the fittings on the bottom. Or maybe it's a pretty common if someone has gotten uh, new air conditioning, you've had a major service done in your bilge, it can happen where people accidentally step on your hoses cause a leak that way. So that's kind of like a quick gist of how to use the Sealand vacuum tester gauge, isolating components, the toilet, the accumulator tank, or the pump, um, and finding out exactly where your leak is and how big of a leak we're looking for. So if you guys have any questions, need to purchase a vacuum tester gauge, need to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself, or uh, he's not yet a senior technical advisor. Almost. Um, almost, we're working on him. But uh, need to schedule time with either myself, excuse me, or one of the other senior technical advisors. We've been more than happy to get you squared away. Thanks so much, have a great day. Make sure to hit that like button. Ding.